Now that we've established the first part of Mendel's model, when we defined what an allele was, which was simply an alternate version of a gene, and then we talked about how each chromosome has two copies of an allele, which would be that alternate form of a gene. We mentioned the idea of dominant versus recessive, and then we finally sort of labeled out Mendel's first law, that law of segregation. We're going to continue our discussion on Mendel's model by entitling this next flowchart Mendel's Model 2. So I'll entitle this Mendel's Model Continued or Mendel's Model 2. In this next flowchart, what we're going to be looking at is a sort of continued look at the law of segregation, just a little bit more details into what it contains, because we finished our last video off by saying that it results in that 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio that's seen in the F2 generation. I want to sort of shed some light on that statement by continuing to look at this. Whenever you're looking at the law of segregation in terms of Mendel and what he did, you have to follow the dominant and recessive allele. So let's write that down. Follow dominant slash recessive alleles. And what I mean by this is that you have to look at genotypes. In order to follow the dominant recessive alleles, you have to look at genotypes. And we remember that genotypes, as opposed to phenotypes, are the genes, the genetics. Think geno for genetics as opposed to pheno for physical. This is what we're actually going to be looking at. We're looking at the specific genes, the specific alleles, and how they are related to in terms of each other, in terms of dominant versus recessive. We have different ways to categorize this, looking at genotypes during the law of segregation. Two different ways are, are through the term homozygous. So we'll say homozygous and also through its opposite, heterozygous. Things you've probably heard before, but we're just going to define them very clearly in this video. Homozygous simply means two identical alleles at locus. So we'll write that down. Two identical alleles at locus. And remember, a locus is the location at which genes are found, and alleles are simply alternate forms of genes. But if they're identical and not alternate, they're of course going to be homo, meaning the same, zygous, referring to the genes. Two different examples of this could be, let's say, capital G with capital G, or lowercase g with lowercase g. Now there are two different denotions here because there are two different types of homozygosity, we could say. The two different types include homozygous dominant, so we'll write um, homo dominant, and this one would be homozygous recessive, because it involves the two recessive alleles. Because we remember, if I state right now over here, if we want to have green, green is going to be a color, let's say, in the plant that's dominant, and I'm going to denote that from this point forward with the capital G, and then the opposite, the other uh, alternative to this allele, to this gene of color, of plant color, would be yellow. And I'm going to say that by process of elimination is recessive, and it would be lowercase g. So we have homozygous identical alleles recessive, and homozygous identical alleles dominant, as denoted by our sort of convention, naming convention and allelic convention listed here. So what about heterozygous? Heterozygous is when we have two different alleles at the locus. So let's write that down. Two different alleles at locus. And of course, the locus is the location for these genes. And there's only one option here. It's to have two different alleles, a capital and a lowercase, or a dominant and a recessive. But let's remember the sort of outcome of this is going to be different than the outcomes of these based off of the phenotypes. What would be the phenotype of somebody who's homozygous dominant? That would give us a homozygous dominant green phenotype. So our genotype, our genes, our letters, our capital G, capital G, homozygous dominant. But what's our phenotype? Our phenotype is green. And what about over here? Homozygous recessive, lowercase g with lowercase g is our genotype, but our phenotype is yellow. Because we have two recessive alleles, two lowercase g's, that's the only possible way to get yellow. But what if you have one of each? We sort of alluded to this in our previous video. What if you have one big g and one little g? You're going to have that masking effect, remember that? So this is going to give us, this heterozygous uh, proportion of genotypes is going to give us a green phenotype. 
But this green phenotype, and let's remember, it's a phenotype, meaning physical outcome, sort of the displaying, the physical portrayal of the genes. The physical portrayal of these two genes uh, is green, and the physical portrayal or phenotype of these two genes is yellow. For this one, since they're mixed, we get green. But why don't we get a mix? Well, this is because we can ask ourselves uh, why, and this is because dominant, we can say, is greater than recessive. Simply what we mean by this is the idea of masking once again. Some alleles will get masks. Some alleles, some genes will get masked by others. If something is dominant and another thing is recessive, the dominant gene will mask the recessive gene, the recessive allele. Thus you will get the dominant green characteristic as denoted up here. Green is dominant, capital G is dominant. Thus if you have just any form of this capital G, you will have this portrayal of a dominant allele, a dominant phenotype will show. So this is our basic idea behind following dominant and recessive alleles. What we can do next is the idea of a monohybrid cross. So I'm going to write that down over here. Monohybrid cross. This is something Mendel did. And what you're going to do in this situation, sort of a side note you can put over here, is that you're going to be following the heterozygote. You're going to be following the heterozygote, so you need to make a heterozygote. So that, those are our steps, sort of our side step. Need to make het, let's say. And a heterozygote is capital G, lowercase g. So how can we possibly get this arrangement? Well, it's very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a parent generation, P. That parent generation, we have to figure out a combination, a cross, that's going to give us G, capital, and lowercase g. And it's very simply going to be something in which the parent has two capital G's, one of them at least, and crossing with something that has what? Two lowercase g's. These are both, you can write this down on the side, true breeding parents. So I'm just going to write true breeds. They're true breeding parents, both of them. They both have the same exact identical alleles, just in different forms, capital versus lowercase. So what is the consequence of this? Well, the consequence is you're going to have a one green parent and one yellow parent based off of our sort of rule over here. And once we have this combination, once we have this cross happening, we're going to have something occur via meiosis. Meiosis, remember, is to get smaller. So we have to figure out what gamete will this parent, let's say this is the dad and this is the mom, what, what gamete will the dad give to its offspring? The gamete that will be given is of course going to be either one of these alleles. And of course the only option is capital G. And then on the other side, if we have a gamete, remember a gamete is only one, it's haploid. These are both diploid characteristics right here, diploid, two things. We have to cut it in half via meiosis. And if we cut this one in half, what are we going to get as the gamete? just lowercase g. And this will be our sort of cross. This is what's going to happen at the gamete level. So we can put gametes on the side here. The gametes from dad will be capital G, and the gametes from mom will all exclusively be lowercase g. Once we combine these, this plus sign could be sort of a way to look at fertilization. So we'll say via fert. Via fertilization of a, of a sort of gamete, let's say a sperm cell that has this capital G and an egg cell that has this lowercase g, they're going to literally combine together to give us what genotype? Very obviously it's going to be G, G. Look what we needed to do. We need to follow a het to do a monohybrid cross. I haven't explained what that is yet because what we first have to do initially is to make a heterozygote. I've just made a heterozygote. This is now considered not our parent generation but our F1 generation. This is heterozygote from the two parents. The initial two parents is now considered our heterozygote. We can call this now a monohybrid. On the side we can write monohybrid. It is no longer a true breed. The parents were true breeds, but this is a monohybrid. There's one change between this, mono, hybrid meaning like different, one change between this and this, and one change between this, g, g, and this, g, g. What is the change? We see two capitals here, we only see one here. We see two, one lowercase here, we see two here. That's our mono change, our one single change that happened. This is also then considered our hetero, our heterozygote. It's heterozygous. And so, what do we expect to be expressed based off of this dominant recessive allele relationship? This is obviously going to be green. It's going to be green because green 
capital G is dominant to the recessive lowercase g. So no matter what, whenever you have capital G, no matter what, anytime you see capital G, the phenotype, the physical portrayal of that gene, of that trait will be green because that is the dominant relationship as established up here. So this is our F1 generation. In the next video, we'll, we'll look at a uh, continued look at this monohybrid cross, but right now we've established the heterozygote. Now we're actually going to do the cross part in which we figure out what Mendel did with this heterozygote that he developed in order to figure out the amazing ratio that he later developed known as the 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio in the next video.